spiders, the dark heights, um, the simulation switch getting flicked off and everything we know disappearing from existence. These are some of the more common fears that people deal with. My fear is a little less common. It is the chord progression to the John Coltrane song, Giant Steps, also known as coltrane Aphobia. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'll be revisiting what many consider to be the hardest chord progression to solo over. When I was in college, I spent quite a bit of time learning jazz, but when it was time to learn Coltrane changes, I basically rage quit on the spot and went into a spiral of open chords and pentatonic scales. It simply seemed too hard, and I also didn't really like the way that it sounded, so I said to myself, why would I spend my time trying to get good at this madness? But now, some 10 years later, I'm a little bit older, got a bit more maturity under the old belt, so today I'm gonna to take a second shot at the Giant Steps chord progression. In this video, I'll discuss what makes it so difficult and then try my hand at playing something passable over top. But before we get into it, I should let you know that I'll do my best to explain the musical concepts so that even the non-musician can understand. However, we will quickly get into some fairly advanced topics. If this seems like the kind of stuff that you'd like to get deeper into, or you need a refresher on the basics, Good news for you, I've got a big sale going on at my course platform, samuraigatarotheory.com. If you've ever wanted to look under the hood of music and really start understanding why it works the way it does, I have four courses over there designed to take your musicianship to the next level. They're professionally animated to make the tough stuff that many get hung up on easy to understand and there's supplementary elements like quizzes, jam tracks, and lists of things to work on to keep you engaged. For a bit longer, everything over there is 50% off with promo code back to school 21 You can find more at samuraiguitar3.com. I'll also put up links in the description. Okay, so at this point, I've hyped up this chord progression quite a bit. I feel like the best thing to do now is just play you the chord progression so you can hear what it sounds like. never heard that before you might notice that it's really fast and it just kind of sounds unusual and different in fact on the original recording of giant steps when it came time for the world-class pianist tommy flanagan to take a solo you can hear that he struggles mightily over top of those chords and this is after the last pianist got fired because he straight up refused to even try to solo. In the late 50s, John Coltrane had begun experimenting with some unorthodox theoretical approaches to harmony and improvising. The Tune Giant Steps is the title song off what many consider the greatest album by the greatest saxophonist, and it showcases his new groundbreaking harmonic explorations. So what is it about these chords that makes them so difficult to play over? To understand this, we need to refresh a few basic musical principles. Here we go. First of all, a song will generally be derived from a single set of seven different notes called a major scale or key. When played in order, they sound like this. There's 12 different notes available to us in the Western musical alphabet, and off of each one of these notes, you can build a major scale like the one that you just heard. All of these scales are unique in the sense that none of them have the same notes as each other. A C major scale, for example, has the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B. The scale repeats an octave higher when we get back to the next C. Whereas an A major scale has the notes A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, and then everything repeats at the A. Here, by raising the C, F, and G and making them sharp, we get that major scale sound. And likewise, some scales require you to add flats or lower notes to get that major scale sound. To figure out how many notes we need to make sharp or flat to get that major scale, we use a tool called the circle of fourths. This shows us all the possible keys conveniently placed around a circle. The closer two keys are on the circle, the more notes that they have in common. For example, the key of G and D, which are beside each other, only have one note different, whereas G and E flat, being four places apart, have four different notes. Typically, when there's a key change in a song, it changes in a fairly predictable manner. For example, you'll often see a key change where only one note changes. Like from the key of C to the key of F, where the only note different between these two keys is the B or B flat. Jazz music will often cycle through a number of different key changes in one song. Having to play different scales at different points in the song is one of the big things that makes jazz challenging, but also fun. Now, another one of the key elements in jazz music that we need to discuss is the 2-5-1 progression. Off of any note in the major scale, you can build a chord. The chord that you get off of the second note in the scale is called a minor seven. And since it's the second note in the scale, we call this a two minor seven. Off of the fifth note, you get a five dominant seven, and the first note gives you a one major seven. Playing these one after another is called a two five one, and it sounds like this. 
These three chords work wonderfully together. The two minor seven leads into the five seven, which strongly pushes to the one major seven, which sounds like home base. Let's do an example where we play a two five one derived from the key of C, followed by a two five one in the key of F. We would have this. That would be an example of a very common chord progression that you might come across in jazz. We're going between two keys here, those keys having one different note. Soloing over top of this wouldn't be too hard to conceptualize. When you're playing over the 2-5-1 in C, you would play all natural notes. When you play over the 2-5-1 in F, the only note that would change would be the B, which becomes a B flat. And it's also worth pointing out that in jazz, you might find abbreviated versions of this 2-5-1 progression. Sometimes it just goes from a 2 to a 5, other times it's just 5 to 1. Okay. That is the Jazz Theory Primer. It's a lot of info and not a lot of time, simplified because I don't want to teach an entire theory class in this video. If you want that, SamuraiGuitarTheory.com has you covered. My course is The Rudiments and Beyond the Basics. Teach this stuff from the ground up. Use promo code BACKTOSCHOOL21 for half off. So now with all that said and done, let's talk about the chord progression in Giant Steps. To visualize what makes this song so hard, let's pull up the chord chart and do a bit of analysis. The first chord is B major seven, which is the one chord in the key of B. We then go D seven, G major seven, which is a five one in a different key, the key of G. This is followed by B flat seven, then E flat major seven, five one in another different key, E flat. In the first three bars here, we've already cycled through three different keys and we're just getting started. We then have a 2-5-1 in G, followed by a 5-1 in E flat, then a 5-1 in B. Coming up next is a 2-5-1 in E flat, a 2-5-1 in G, 2-5-1 in B, 2-5-1 in E flat again, and then a 2-5 setting up the one back at the beginning of the song. The entire tune cycles between the keys B, G, and E flat, each of these keys being a major third interval apart from each other. And when moving between these keys, you find a lot of minor thirds in the root motion. I tell you this because it is quite uncommon and would throw off most musicians. Now, remember when we said that when keys are close to each other on the circle of fourths, they share a lot of notes? Why don't we pull that up and take a look? When we look at B, G, and E flat, we see that these three scales are as far apart as you can get from each other which means that they share very few notes. So soloing over top of these keys in one song is kind of like doing a triathlon, but the sports aren't related at all. One second you're doing gymnastics, the next second you're skydiving, and then you go and do some sumo wrestling. On top of that, you're not staying in these keys for long. It's not like you have 12 bars in one key before you have to think about changing. No, it's half a bar to two bars max. If that's not hard enough for you, the tempo of this song is insanely fast. The original recording is 300 beats per minute, which as far as I'm concerned is the musical equivalent of approaching the speed of light. So now let's listen to the progression again, thinking about all the things that we've discussed. At this point, I hope I've demonstrated my case as to why this chord progression is so difficult. To summarize, the key changes in the song all use very different notes, the changes happen quick, and the tempo is lightning fast. Because of this, the song is kind of a proving ground in jazz circles. If you want to hang with the big dogs, you need to be able to improvise over top of the chord progression, and you need to be able to do it in all 12 keys. Back in the day when I was a young aspiring jazz student, I took a couple stabs at it took a good hard look at my life and said to myself, F this. Now, some 10 years later, here I stand again, face to face with the progression that once took me down. I'm gonna attempt to improvise over top of it. What you hear next is what I come up with. Okay, I'm pulling the plug on that one. No one needs to hear any more of that. That is a zero out of 10, a cold hard auto fail. Without spending at least a month practicing that, improvising is just not gonna happen. Instead, I'm gonna try this again, but this time I'm gonna take my time and compose a solo, hopefully coming up with something that gets me a passing grade. Take two, what you hear next is what I write. <laughs>
even though that wasn't improvised, that was still extremely challenging for me. It wasn't the best thing I've ever played. Passable though, I would give it a strong six out of 10. In the process of writing and recording that, I almost threw in the towel multiple times and just moved on to a different video idea. It was one of the more difficult musical challenges that I've done. Let me tell you about my struggles. First of all, my jazz vocabulary is really quite lacking. Early on, I made the executive decision to do a Western swing style thing, which is basically country meets jazz. At least when it comes to telly twanging, I have something to draw on. The next thing that I really battled with was coming up with coherent musical ideas as the keys changed underneath. It's like changing languages so abruptly, so quickly, mid-sentence, makes it hard to follow a train of thought. Finding those natural sounding melodies was extremely tough, and even after giving it my best effort, I still feel like it sounds kind of choppy, a far cry from the fluidity that you would find in someone who has spent real hours practicing this. When you listen to a guy like Coltrane playing over top of this progression, it sounds as natural as his first language. His melodies are absolutely brilliant. He speaks it so effortlessly. For me, it was like I'm having a conversation in Mandarin, which I've never spoken a word of, um, and I'm sitting there putting everything into Google Translate, reading it off and hoping for the best. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my effort at playing over what many consider to be the hardest chord progression, Giant Steps. I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you learn something in the process. Remember, we just glanced over a number of musical concepts here. If you'd like to dive deeper into why music works the way it does and how you can use that information to become a better musician, check out my course platform, samuraiguitar3.com, where I'm running a big back to school sale. Everything over there is 50% off when you use promo code back to school 21. Thank you all for watching. If you want to check out another video like this one, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to stay tuned to a wide range of musical content. Until next time, look after each other, look after yourselves, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist. I'll see you again soon.